I'm Professor Francis Longstaff. Uh, this is Eric Nice, one of our top PhD students in finance, and we wanted to spend just a couple of minutes to tell you a little bit about some recent research that we've been working on together with a fellow who's uh, yeah, you know, on Wall Street. Uh, the topic of our research is about corporate bonds. Uh, corporate bonds, as a lot of people know, are kind of interesting investments, uh, particularly recently, since they yield a lot higher than treasury bonds. And there are a lot of institutions that are very interested in looking at corporate bonds. But of course, again, as many people know, corporate bonds have some different investment characteristics than treasury bonds. Corporations tend to, once in a while, default and uh, that makes them a little bit riskier. Now, historically, people have looked at the higher yields that you can get as corporate bonds as maybe just the extra yield is just compensation for the extra credit risk that you're taking, and everything is kind of fair once you've taken into account the possibility the company may get into to trouble. But recently, there, there's been a lot of debate about that because it seems like corporate yields, you're getting more premium, more credit spread than is really what you would deserve based on the credit risk. So there's this huge controversy in the investment uh, industry right now as to what is going on with that credit spread. Is it, is it just compensation for risk or is there something else? If it's compensation for risk, then it's pretty much a fair investment. But if there's something else, then there may be some opportunities in corporate bonds. So this has been kind of the issue that has been hotly debated and no one really has had much of an approach to look at this r until recently. And this is kind of what our approach has been doing. And uh, let me just turn the time over to Eric to kind of explain what we are doing in this research. Well, thank you. Uh, so the goal of this study is to break down the yield or expected return on corporate bonds into three components. Uh, the first component is uh, associated with so-called time rate of in pure time rate of interest, which would be the expected return or yield on a truly riskless bond. And the best example of that would be bonds issued by the United States Treasury. Uh, second, there's a component associated with the expected losses due to default. And then third, there's this highly debated component, which seems to be associated with perhaps the marketability or liquidity of corporate bonds. And so our goal was to essentially decompose corporate yields or expected returns into these three components. So to do that, we needed uh, data from three different sources. First, obviously, this is a study on corporate bonds, so we needed corporate bond prices. Second, we needed some independent uh, market characterization of the size or expected losses due to default on specific corporations. And for that, we used the prices on so-called credit default swaps, which are essentially insurance contracts insuring against the losses due to credit events on uh, corporations issuing bonds. Those credit events might include bankruptcies or payment defaults. Third, we needed some measure of the pure time rate of interest, uh, and that is, again, the uh, yield or expected returns on truly riskless bonds. The best example, again, is the United States Treasury. And we obtained that uh, data from the Federal Reserve uh, as well as the Bloomberg system. And the other two sources of data came from uh, Citigroup. So once we had that data, we needed to build some sort of mathematical model to model the probability of default of a corporation. And that model needs to allow us not only to price these credit default swaps, which are only sensitive to uh, default, expected default losses on these uh, bonds issued by corporations, but also uh, sensitive to the time rate of interest. We also need to be able to price the corporate bonds, which have this additional third component, uh, often called liquidity or marketability. Once we had that model designed, we then took the data we had from those three sources and fed it into the model. And what that model gave us back were essentially those three components of corporate yields or expected returns on corporate bonds, the pure time rate of interest component, the component associated with default losses, and then the component associated with this thing we call market, uh, marketability or liquidity. And we were most interested in studying this marketability or liquidity component. So we analyzed that uh, to try to determine not only its magnitude, but how it varies across different firm characteristics as well as through time. And we came to three or four very important conclusions regarding the 
uh, behavior of this marketability or liquidity component. First, in terms of magnitude, uh, this marketability or liquidity component, if you look at a corporate bond and you look at its expected return or yield above and beyond the pure time rate of interest, you can look at the relative fraction of that so-called corporate spread made up of the marketability component or the, the liquidity component. And what we found is that the fraction of that spread associated with the marketability component ranges from about 50% for the safest corporate bonds down to about 15% for the most speculative or non-investment grade corporate bonds. Second, we found that that marketability component seems to vary with different firm characteristics. For example, it uh, seems to be higher for bond, corporate bonds issued by financial corporations as opposed to industrial corporations. So there are interesting industry effects in the size of this marketability component. Finally, uh, we, another thing that the uh, marketability component is related to is how much it costs to transact in the corporate bond. When an investor buys or sells a corporate bond to or from a dealer, they have to pay some certain fee just to transact in the corporate bond, which is totally separate from the default risk or pure time rate of interest. And what we find is that the marketability component is actually larger when the size of that transaction's fee is larger. Finally, if we look at how this uh, marketability component moves through time and try to understand what drives it or what it codes varies with through time, uh, we find that it's related to certain market-wide indicators of the marketability or liquidity of all securities in all financial markets. For example, it seems to be related to uh, flows into money market mutual funds, which are largely regarded as the most defensive investment positions in financial markets. And it's also related to the amount of corporate bond issuance by companies which issue public debt. So the more debt which public companies put out into the market, the larger is the marketability component of those corporate bonds already outstanding in the market. So we see that the magnitude of the marketability or liquidity component is not negligible, that it seems to co-vary with certain interesting uh, firm characteristics, and that it seems to move in interesting ways through time that are that is correlated with certain um, market-wide indicators of the marketability or liquidity of all financial instruments. So I think that sums up okay. you know, what our paper One of the interesting things of the study to us has been just how much institutional interest there has been in this project. It started with Citigroup, the Global Credit Derivatives Desk, giving us an incredible database from which we did the study. Uh, but there have just been a lot of other financial institutions, hedge funds, uh, money managers of all descriptions that have been very, very interested in the project. They've given us a lot of support, uh, given us some excellent uh, insights into the markets and uh, raised some really interesting issues. So it's been a kind of a pleasure working with this because one side we have the academics who are extremely interested in this. In fact, the paper is being published uh, in the Journal of Finance uh, in the near future. But also, we've had the opportunity to go around Wall Street and the, the money managed world, present this at a lot of conferences, and have a lot of people in the real world express a lot of interest in kind of the results. So it's been a great, uh, a great project to work on and uh, a lot of fun. And uh, thank you very much.